This is the last real man, Silas Young, and you are in the Wrestling Epicenter. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. Well, hello there. Welcome to Episode 3 of Interactive Wrestling Radio's Week of Interviews here on WrestlingEpicenter.com and YouTube. As always, it is James Walsh, and this episode is going to feature a Ring of Honor rising star, a guy who's got a character bigger than most characters on WWE or Impact Wrestling, GFW TV right now. He's the last real man, Silas Young, and he is going to be facing at Death Before Dishonor, Jay Lethal in a last man standing match. Going to be one hell of a fight. If you saw the War of the Worlds iPay-Per-View from England, from the UK in June, what a match these guys had then. This will be even more violent than that. Should be the blow-off or potentially the blow-off of this feud. And man, to say we had both these guys on this show and this lead-up means a lot to us. So thank you to Ring of Honor for helping this come to fruition. If you haven't heard it, check out the archives because we still have our Jay Lethal interview up. So you can check that one out after you listen to Silas Young right here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Anderson, and you are listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Hey guys, this is Jay Lethal, the greatest first generation wrestler, and you're listening to Interactive Radio. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Right now on the Newsmaker line with me right now is professional wrestling's last real man. From Ring of Honor, he is Silas Young. Mr. Young, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing great, man. It's great to have you on the show. I have been a fan of your character for a couple of years now, and uh, it's it's one of the bright spots on Ring of Honor. It's such a diversion from from a lot of the other guys out there. So I wanted to, first of all, give you kudos for coming up with a character that's excited me. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad that you can appreciate it. <laughs> I, I've, I've had people actually call me up and say, is he stealing your Facebook posts and using them as promos? <laughs> promo, so, um, I'm sure you're not, but just throwing that out there. Anyway, we, last week we had on Jay Lethal, and you're going to be facing Jay Lethal in his first ever Last Man Standing match, Death Before Dishonor. That will be happening on September 22nd, one week from the time that we're recording this interview, as a matter of fact. Are you looking forward to the big match one week from tonight? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Jay Lethal's uh, a guy who's been all around the world. He's traveled. He's done a lot. And I'm just there to prove that I'm just as good, if not better, than Jay Lethal. So I'm, I'm more than excited. I'm more than excited to show the fans and to show the wrestling, the wrestling world that I'm the guy they should be looking at. You're working with a guy now, I mean, at War, War of the Worlds UK, you got to beat Jay Lethal. And, I mean, you are working with a guy who was pretty much running roughshod over the entire promotion for a while. He was world champion for a really long time. Uh, do you think that working with this gentleman and also getting wins over him could be putting you in the world title picture soon? Absolutely. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Jay Lethal made a comment during our interview. He said that, he often thinks that you should have been around 10 years prior, that if you were around 10 years prior, you'd probably be a millionaire right now. What do you think of that comment? 
you know, I, I got to be honest with you. I'm surprised to hear Jay say something like that, but you know, he, he is right. I, I think I, I, I came, you know, I'm a guy who, uh, you know, I, I, I think I like to, I like to think that I'm the type of guy that, you know, I've melded in a real old school type of wrestling with the new style of wrestling. And I've kind of melded both of those together. And that's something that's, you know, uh, you don't see a lot of today. I think that's what helps help me stick out. And, you know, I think that's something that could, has helped me make money in this business. You and I are very close in age. You just got about a year on me. That's it. And um, we both grew up, from what I've heard from you in prior interviews, growing up watching the WWF in the late 80s. I mean, obviously, Hulk Hogan, amazing influence on me and, and obviously on yourself as well. What was it about that late era, that late 80s rock and wrestling connection era that made us stay in love with this stuff and still do what we're doing, respectively, in wrestling today? I think I think you know for guys like me and you we grew up uh we grew up we saw the all these big larger than life characters and you know at, it was at a time when wrestling was really getting into the you know into the character and into the the the, the big personalities and then coming right out of that we got to experience stuff like you know WCW had a lot of the the cruiserweights and stuff like that I think we got to you know me and you, like you're saying we're around the same age we got to we got to experience a little bit of the huge personalities and then the beginning of very athletic wrestling. So I think we got to, we got to experience a lot of really good, cool wrestling and a lot of different uh, changes in the business, so to speak, as well. I'm sure you get tired of being asked this, but I'll ask anyway. Who was your favorite? Like, who was the most influential on you? Uh, I wouldn't ever say that I definitely had a favorite. I mean, I, I have always liked tons of different guys, so I never had a, this is my favorite guy. Okay, cool. I, I'm trying to, because when I, I mentioned that I love the character, and, and you mentioned that it kind of blends old school and new school together, and I do see that, especially the old school more with the character with new school athleticism. Uh, who? How did you come up with this last real man gimmick? <laughs> the last real man is basically my father. I, I grew up with five older brothers. Uh, they're all kind of a bunch of goofballs and uh you know by the time i came around my dad uh my dad had already raised five boys and you know he was kind of a no-nonsense type of guy so basically the last real man is my father all right so like would anybody be surprised to find out that that's not you or is that definitely a part of you as well oh uh, it's definitely a part of me as well that's for sure all right so we mentioned the WWF, and, and you got a chance to work for WWE, not for, you know, not for the longest amount of time, but what do you think of um, their developmental system, and how does it look differently now from when you were there? Uh, well, you know, I never, I mean, I got to do, I mean, I got, I don't, how do you say this? I never really was in the developmental system. I got offered a developmental contract. I did a very little bit, uh, like a week-long thing at OVW, when they had a developmental system there, right, right. but uh, but but I never actually got to to join the developmental program because uh, my contract was ba basically reneged on before I could ever even uh, finish the whole hiring process because at that time uh, OVW had the developmental deal and in the process of uh, you know doing all the paperwork and all stuff like that. Uh, OVW got their um, developmental contract taken away from them by WWE, and then I was told that uh, sorry, you know, we wouldn't be fo following through on your contract. So it was it, it was like I got offered the the opportunity, but then just at the the worst time ever because then they had had taken it away because of closing OVW. But you know, even with that said. Uh, you know, the developmental system over over the years has grown and grown and grown. And now, you know, WWE has this huge, uh, you know, performance center and they have, you know, nutritionists and personal trainers and, you know, just, you know, promo rooms, all, all these different things. So all these good things that I've heard about and that guys have told me about, you know, it just seems like they've really put a lot into the the developmental system every year, just letting it grow and grow. Absolutely. And uh, moving forward to Ring of Honor, though, back to Ring of Honor. That's what we're here to discuss. Um, one of the best feuds that you were part of was against Dalton Castle. There were so many twists and turns to that, and it really defined your character. Uh, thoughts on working with Dalton Castle? 
yeah, it was a, it was a really good uh, a good experience. I think it was a good thing for both uh, you know both me and Dalton. Uh, we were both kind of new with the company a little bit and, you know, like you said, it helped define the character and for both of us, it helped really define the character because they were two characters that were just basically the exact opposites of each other. Uh, I think that's what was really good about it. You know, they were, there were two characters that people can definitely look at and go, all right, well, this guy's this guy and this guy's that guy. Uh, you know, it was, it was one of those stories where it, you know, people had a side and they could pick a side and, it was fun to watch. Uh, I thought it was a, a very enjoyable time. Dalton's a, a, a true professional. Absolutely. Now, you're a very strong character. Obviously, Dalton Castle, a very strong character in a very different way. Ring of Honor doesn't always get credit for having those strong characters. A lot of times they focus so much on the in-ring stuff that some of the people forget that you know, there are bright, colorful characters, very well-defined characters. Do you think that's something that Ring of Honor has to uh, maybe improve on slightly? You know, the fact that they are they do have those larger-than-life characters as well as the best pure wrestling in the world. Uh, you know, I, I I guess I guess you could say it, but like that. But I don't think it's something that they necessarily need to improve on. I just think it's something that uh, the fans maybe just haven't quite realized, or that maybe they slowly realize that. Uh, you know, for, forever Ring of Honor was built on in-ring talent. It was built on what happens in the ring. So now you have some of the best wrestlers in the world working for, you know, Ring of Honor, still putting on that best in-ring product, but they're also getting to see some great characters now. I think there's a, a good balance of it. I just think sometimes fans are surprised when they check it out because Ring of Honor has been built so long on being this this awesome in-ring product with great wrestling that – you know, it's almost like a, a little extra that you get to see some really good characters, too. Very cool. So you're a very much a straight shooter, and, and I am as well, so I, I love what you say. Uh, I wanted to ask you this question because it seems like it's almost a talking point that's been put out there. We interviewed Will Ferrara, uh, Punishment Martinez, as well as Jay Lethal recently, and all three made a point of saying that they consider Ring of Honor to be the number two wrestling company in the entire world. Do you echo those sentiments? Absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think it is that splits it out so much from everybody else? Because Ring of Honor has a different flavor than everybody else. Uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, that's a good thing to ask. Uh, I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's just, I think it's a fact of how it, how the company started. Uh, you know, it started out as just this, this pure wrestling company. It started out as a company just owned by a a guy or a handful of guys that had an idea that they really wanted to bring something back that was special and different. And, and the way it's just, it's grown over the last 15, 16 years. Uh, I think that's what it is. I think it's the fact that it wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be anything big and that the fans in the wrestling world have taken it over and it's became something big. I, I think that's what it is. I think it's because it was something that was, wasn't meant to be number two and that it, it grew into that. I think that's why I think that's that special thing that makes it work. I'll tell you, I deal with uh, some WWE guests. I deal with some GFW guests. I, I'm saying this and I'll probably get in trouble with the other two. And I'll say this though. It seems like the most intelligent workers are in ring of honor you guys like <laughs> like there's been some times when i've interviewed you guys that i need to look up the word because i don't know what it means you know? so you guys just have this really high iq and not just not just you know book smarts iq i'm talking wrestling iq too you guys just know your stuff more than the, the more than the rest i guess my question is how does that you're like i said you're, you're my age you're 38 years old uh no no offense if i'm outing you um 37 actually 37 and, uh, there you 37, go 37 there you go i my math sucks um <laughs> is it hard is it hard to keep up because these guys are insane uh, you know i don't know i mean it feels good it's a great locker room uh every everybody's real real cool it's not real a real clicky place uh, I think it's a, it's just a good place where we all challenge each other. We all, you know, we sit down and we talk and, you know, uh, ideas just bounce off of each other that I think it's, uh, it's more of a, like, let's, what can we do to be awesome? What can we do to be better than what's happening or better than what we've already done? So I think it's more like a, a, a professional challenge to each other almost. So I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very good thing and it helps make for a great work environment. 
Absolutely. All right, final question for you. One week from tonight is the big pay-per-view, Friday night, Death Before Dishonor. Other than your match with Jay Lethal, what else are you looking forward to, and what can we expect from your match? Oh, you can expect to see an ass whooping in that match. It's last man standing. Uh, you know, it's not just a regular wrestling match. It's not about who's the better wrestler. It's about who's the better man and who wants it more. So you can expect to see a lot of hard hitting, probably a good amount of weapons. I know I'll be using weapons on my behalf because I can, and I'll get away with it. Uh, the rest, of, the rest of the show, you're going to be seeing. You're going to be seeing the best wrestling in the world. You're going to see some of the top talents from across the globe, including New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, you're going to, you're just going to, you're going to see wrestling like wrestling isn't necessarily presented by other companies nowadays. So if you're a fan of purely professional wrestling, then this is definitely a show for you to check out. And I echo that, like I said about, about yourself, but it's true of the entire company. It has an old school feel with new school athleticism and it just really does. It combines both worlds so well. So I'm a big ring of honor fan. I appreciate you taking the time before I let you go. I do have one last favor from you. All right, let's hear it. You've done a few of these interviews. I'm sure you've been asked this by each and every one of them. Do you mind giving me a promo just saying this is Silas Young and you're in the wrestling epicenter? Yep. This is the last real man, Silas Young, and you are in the wrestling epicenter. This is the pretty badass Kelly Klein. And you are listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio.